Ladies and gentlemen, the Paradise Garage is back with the third episode of the Porsche engine rebuild. In episode 2 we removed the cylinder heads and now the cylinders and pistons are coming off. To know which is which I grind numbers into the pistons and cylinders with a Dremel. Might seem harsh but very little material is removed and it won't hurt the engine. Between the cylinders and the case sits thin copper seals. We're gonna try to save these to use in the reassembly. A bit of luck, the case isn't warped and we can get away with reusing them. Cylinder 3 contained a lot of gunk from rust and soot. Usually I try to vacuum it up but this wouldn't go. I use a rag to keep the gunk out of the case and I use a knife to simply scrape it off. As you will see here, cylinder 2 is in a lot better shape than cylinder 3. It actually looks really good. Every garage needs a good vacuum cleaner, just like my 40 year old Electrolux. Here we are on to the other side, and that's cylinder 4 to 6. Soon I'm going to show you how to get the piston pins out. You need to rotate the crank so you get the piston that you want to get the pin out of in the uppermost position. Otherwise you won't get to the pin. You need to be cautious when you rotate the crank, uh, so neither the um, Conrad's or the cam chain get caught in any way. These pistons have floating pins that are kept in place with circlips. You get those circlips out with a small screwdriver or a pair of needle nose pliers. After removing the clips you need a tool for pushing the pin out. It needs to fit inside the bore for the pin in a way it doesn't cause damage to the bore inside the piston and the small end bearing in the rod. Before removing the pistons I check to make sure there is no play in the small end bearing. That way we know we don't need to replace them. Lubrication is your friend when taking engines apart, that's for sure. If the pin is hesitant to move you should take support from the cylinder bolts to not put bending forces on the con rods. The guy named Conrad has really anything to do with this. After doing a few of these you can generally work a lot quicker. Thank you. 
those copper rings again. The handle of a screwdriver of a suitable size is a gentle tool to knock out the pin that's a bit more resilient, using a small hammer, plus the bolts for support. Now it's time for the cylinder bolts. They're usually quite unwilling to leave their spot like pensioners on a cruise, so applying heat is a good idea. These old crankcases are made of magnesium. If magnesium catches fire, which it does fairly easily, it's almost impossible to put out. Therefore I prefer using a heat gun instead of a propane torch when dealing with magnesium. Be careful not to melt the plastic on the mesh inside the crankcase though. One way to stay safe is to clamp the heat gun to a stand and point it directly to the spot on the crankcase that you want to heat. To get the bolts moving, we start with the big pipe wrench. Even this beast have a hard time getting a good grip and is slipping. But finally, we get to it. No retreat, no surrender. Once I get it going, I switch to a smaller pipe wrench. Your hands are gonna be pretty tired after doing all 24 of these and it's not the best day to play tennis. It squeals like a pig. Well, that's all for now. Episode 3 is over and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. You know the drill.